We're here basically for Pearl Harbor, but in particular for Dory Miller. The reason for this backdrop, a year ago, the Navy announced it's building an aircraft carrier. It's going to cost a billion, five hundred million dollars. It's going to be ready in five to ten years. They don't know yet. And it's going to be named after Dory Miller. The reason why it's important is that these other aircraft carriers have always had the names of presidents except one, Admiral Nimitz. And this is Dory Miller, who wasn't even an enlisted man or an officer. I started this in Congress in 1987 with a wonderful African-American who was chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. His name was Mickey Leland. We got to work together because we found each other and he said, Joe, I can't get any Republicans to work with me. I'm not a party type guy. I believe in issues. I believe in people and policy. And that's, you know, human rights is a big thing with me. So is the environment. And I did that as a congressman. I started this with Mickey because Mickey came up to me one day and said, you know, your president, Reagan, executive order is going to get rid of food stamps. Your district is like mine. I'm in Houston. Very rich people, very poor people. You're in Westchester. Very rich people, very poor people. You got to come with me. I got to go before the Agricultural Committee. I said, I'm going to do it. So when I came to him one time talking about a guy from New York, Albany, Henry Johnson, he says, I'll do it with you, Henry Johnson. We'll open up that statute, but you got to do it for Dory Miller. I said, who's Dory Miller? He says, that's my guy from Texas. I didn't know. A lot of people don't know how heroic this guy was. That's why we're here today. But in any case, I've been working on this 30 years in Congress. We started. Mickey Leland is a hero. He died two years later delivering food and medicine to the starving people of Ethiopia. The plane went down, okay? And I'm continuing this in his memory. Those of you who don't know the entire background, I brought some booklets because when I started this in 1987, it's hard to believe what I heard from Mickey Leland. He said, Joe, a million five hundred fifty thousand African Americans, black Americans, served World War One, World War Two, and not one, not one got our nation's highest award, and dozens were recommended. I says, Mickey, I'm a CPA, and those numbers don't add up. What's the problem? He says, well, you know, we had segregation. And he says, you're talking about racism. Well, we don't call it. It's racism. you got to call it what it is. So I started with him. We didn't get the first one until 1991. He had already passed away in Ethiopia. And since that time, we've got nine Army medals. Two for the World War One, and seven World War Two. And now this will be the first one, World War II, for the Navy. I want to thank Mr. Diagardi for his passionate fight for Dory Miller and this important honor that's long overdue. Dory Miller represents more than just one person who committed a heroic act in a time of crisis. Dory Miller represents the best of what America is. America is being your brother and sister's keeper. America is standing up and fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. It's choosing love over hate. Dory Miller became a member of the United States Navy at a time when the Navy and this country thought of him as less than a man. Didn't keep him from serving. In fact, he received no training in the United States Navy. He could serve food and he could shine shoes. His uniform had plain buttons. He couldn't get the Navy insignia on his button because of his color. And yet, when the time came, when his ship got attacked during the day when our borders were threatened, and not just our borders, the American way of life was threatened that day. On this day, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, everything that we are and everything we stand for as a nation was attacked. Day of infamy. Day of infamy. And Dory Miller said, not on my watch. Dory Miller, who had no training, jumped up on a machine gun that he had no skills on and began firing at the enemy. And it doesn't matter how many planes or ships he was able to strike. What mattered was he stood up and he was his brother's keeper on that day. When they gave the final order to abandon ship, they all abandoned ship, but they didn't abandon one another. And Dory Miller, who swam almost 400 yards to, to safety, brought other men with him, helped other men get out of the water. Dory Miller represents all of the unsung heroes of our country that we see even to this day. As we live in this pandemic right now, we have unsung heroes, people whose names may never get heard, 
people who are holding the hands of, of elderly in nursing homes because their families can't be there, people who are cleaning hospitals and delivering meals, people who are continuing to maintain law and order even at a time when chaos seems to rule. Dory Miller for a long time was just a story. People heard of this man who did something heroic and they didn't know his name. But then they found his name. And we will not let his name be forgotten. We're glad that he's received the um, Naval Medal, the third highest honor, the Navy Cross, I believe. Um, we're super excited that there will be one of these magnificent vessels with the name Dory Miller on it. But Dory Miller and what Dory Miller represents should be recognized with the highest honor this country has to offer, which is the Medal of Honor. Yes. We're here because that honor on his name is for every unnamed, unknown, unsung hero that keeps America great. And it's when we stand up for each other and we choose love over hate, we don't let our circumstance define our actions, and we do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time, that's the legacy of Dory Miller. That's what we're here to fight for and advocate for until he is represented in this way for all of our servicemen and women who serve this country honorably every day. Thank you everyone for coming out today. Let me start by saying, as we've always said since 1776, freedom is not free. Let me say it again. Freedom is not free. It has never been free. It always has to be fought for. And this gentleman who we honor today, Mr. Miller, my brother, showed valor. Valor in the face of danger. Way beyond the call of duty. Way, way, way beyond, beyond the call of duty for what he did in protection of his shipmates, in protection of his ship in protection of his country. That is true valor. As we stand here today to honor not only all those who were lost in World War II, but especially those, the unsung heroes of World War II. Because today we share that freedom, we share that legacy, because that what a is what America is about. What throughout the darkest days, what always brings Americans together is their sense of patriotism and their sense of history. No, it's not a perfect history, but it's our history. It's our history. And we all share in that history. We all are part of it. This quilt of different people from different nations from different backgrounds. That's America. To honor this man, this man of valor, at this time in history, let's make sure we do all that we can that he is awarded the nation's highest honor. The highest honor possible, posthumously for him. And Joe, your support and you picking up this cause uh, is outstanding. When I met Joe four years ago, he told me about what he was doing, and I said, Joe, sign me up. So again, I salute you for what he's done, not only in Congress, but out of Congress for this great cause.